Welcome to Sinspiration. I'm Alex and my ultimate goal is to inspire you to develop a growth mindset. January is historically the best month for job searching. Whether you have been impacted by layoffs, you are an experienced worker looking to switch jobs, or you are a college student looking for work after graduation, you've come to the right person. Today, I will pass on my eight years of resume tips to you in under eight minutes. I have been applying to jobs and interviewing every year since 2014. I have also recruited college students at career fairs, so I know what companies look for when meeting candidates. Peers, recruiters, and my parents have reviewed my resume countless times. I will be using my resume to show you how to write a resume that makes you stand out and get interviews. We've got no time to waste. Let's jump right into it. This is my resume from earlier this year that got me my current job as an AI software engineer. The header and objective. Your name should be in large bold text to make you stand out. Include your contact info, such as phone number and email, but you can leave out your address for privacy. Good to haves include LinkedIn, GitHub, or your website with your portfolio of work samples. You may choose to have an objective or a summary about yourself and what type of role you're seeking. Education. You must include your degree and school. If you are in college, your GPA and expected graduation date are also required. Relevant coursework is highly recommended. The degree is a minimum requirement for certain jobs. The coursework is what's going to draw attention and you may be asked questions about what you learned in those courses. Don't hide your GPA. You need to be honest here. You can remove it after one to two years of working. Skills. Recruiters use this section to check off minimum job requirements. For software engineering, list out your most proficient languages first. Include any tools, software, or equipment you know how to use. Notice I put technical projects before work experience. Let me get back to this later. Work experience. This is the meat of your resume. Work experience is the number one aspect that qualifies you for the job you're applying for and what recruiters look at. For privacy, I have blacked out my employers. The first entry and first line are the most important because it immediately gives the recruiter your impression with your latest title and line of work. Include your title, employer, and dates of employment at the very least. Limit to two to four bullets with each entry and take up most of the line. Follow this pattern for each bullet. Start with an action verb, mention what you used and what you did with key terms and highlight the result. Quantify the result if possible. Performance improvement by 10x, increase sales by 200%, reduce time in half, etc. Use bold and underline if you want to grab your reader's attention, but use it sparingly. Projects. Sometimes you may not have the relevant work experience because you're trying to change career paths. So your projects that are aligned with the job you're applying for will be treated as experience. For me, I was applying to my first machine learning software engineer job, so I needed to highlight relevant projects before my work experience. This actually worked and got me a couple interviews for this type of role. Same as work experience, follow the pattern of action verb, what you used, what you did, and the result. Limit to two to four bullets per entry. Add links to videos demos, or a website showcasing your work. My interviewers often told me they enjoyed watching my Nat Car video. Leadership experience and volunteering. This section is underrated because it's what makes you multidimensional. It shows a side of you other than your education and work, and you're unique in your own way. If you were an officer in a student club or held a leadership position in an organization, this is your opportunity to show it to the recruiter or hiring manager. Mentorship tells a good deal about a person as well. Not everyone has this section, so this is how you can stand out. Awards and publications 
add a nice touch to your qualifications and abilities, but it is not required and doesn't have as much weight as the sections I talked about earlier. Interests are fillers in my opinion. It's best to just leave them out. The hiring manager will ask you about your interests during the interview. Notice that I just put supplemental projects that are relevant. Last tips. Ideally, most, if not all sections and entries should relate to the job you're applying for. Make sure your resume addresses all minimum qualifications and as many preferred qualifications as possible. The most important and relevant work experience and projects should be as close to the top as possible, or at least on the first page. Don't limit yourself to one page. There is no hard rule about this. While the most important info should be on the first page, your second page can be a supplement. Minimize white space. I use half inch margins and fill up each line as much as possible. You can start with one inch, but don't go less than 0.3 inch. Remember this golden formula for each bullet point. Action verb, what you used, what you did, and the result. One line can leave a positive impression. Woo! Glad we made it through in under eight minutes. At least this was just resume tips and not my hardcore review of your resume. Whenever I review my friends or college students resumes before career fairs or job applications, I pick on every minor detail to the word, just like how reviewers have picked on my resume. Constructive criticism is good. It's how we improve. When you get those interviews and job offers, you can thank me by hitting the like button, commenting below, and subscribing to my channel, Sinspiration. Also follow me on TikTok and Instagram for shorts and reels of my YouTube videos, and DM me if you want me to personally review your resume. You've been Sinspired today. See you next time. Click here for a video about job searching tips and click here for a video that YouTube thinks you'll like.